Uh, this recording will be a little introduction to Excel objects, collections, you know, properties, methods. This uh, this topic can get really deep, so you need to you know you need to just learn the parts of it that are going to work for this class, and and uh, and you got to ask lots of questions about this. Um, I just want to show you a little example code here, and and we'll just take a look at it and talk about it. Uh, the reading for this uh, for this week really introduces these things, but Microsoft Excel has a uh, huge collection of uh, objects that are available for us to use. There, you can kind of think of them as like little code snippets, little pieces of code that have already been written for us that do various and sundry things. Um, and and these objects are are often grouped into something called collections and uh, it works pretty much like a collection of things that you might have in a drawer at your house um, and so let's just take a look at some sample code of this so you can get a sense of what I'm talking about the application object is a very important object of course when you're programming in Microsoft Excel because the application object refers to Microsoft Excel itself and so we can ask Microsoft Excel the application uh, a variety of questions if you will it actually has a bunch of values stored in the application object and so for instance in the application object there is a workbooks collection and as you can imagine that would be the collection of any open workbooks that a person might have um, you can find out how many workbooks are open by going to the workbooks collection object and asking it, it, its property. It has a count property and the count property of course would return the number of workbooks that are open at any point in time. So uh, this next line that you see here again uses the application object and the application object has the workbooks collection like I mentioned and you'll notice in this case that I I have this parenthesis one. Now what this does is it says okay if workbooks is a collection, I'd like to take a look at the first item in that collection. And so by using the parentheses in one, we can refer to items in a collection. If there were 10 items in this collection, we could use parentheses 10 to refer to the 10th item. So anytime you have an object that's a collection, you can use the syntax of the parentheses and a particular number to access that particular item in that collection. Well, if I ask the workbook collection for the first item in that collection, of course that's going to be a workbook, just one workbook. Now a workbook also has a collection, so this is kind of hierarchical. The workbook has a collection of sheets or worksheets. You'll notice here that I say workbooks one which gets me the first workbook and then I use the dot notation you saw that dot notation up above here when I was referring to the application workbooks collection and then the dot notation allowed me to access the count property of that well here I'm accessing the first workbook and I want to access the worksheets collection in that workbook so I've got a workbook and inside the workbook I have worksheets and I can ask the worksheets collection how many items or how many sheets there are by using the count property. So the worksheets collection will tell me how many items there are. Now this count property you'll notice um, is a property actually generically of collections. So again anytime I have a collection I can ask how many items are in that collection by using the dot count property. Now You'll notice here's another example of that. In this case, we're not asking workbook one about its worksheets. We're asking if there are any charts. Um, we don't have any charts in this particular workbook, so uh, it should come back with a zero for the count. This next example basically says, what is the name of worksheet number one in the first workbook in the application Excel? And so the name property is pretty much what you'd expect. It's whatever's down on that sheet name. Um, here's another example of doing this using a slightly different approach. Notice in this particular case I'm saying application.active workbook instead of just referring to workbook one I'm saying well what is the active workbook and then given the active workbook I can ask that workbook what the active sheet is and again it's this dot notation notice the dot notation and finally I can say to that active sheet what's your name now I ought to get the same value for both of these because it's the same thing actually. 
And finally, here's one last approach. Notice I didn't say application. If you don't say application, it assumes you're talking about the Excel application. And so I can just say uh, active sheet dot name. Well, you'll notice what else is missing here. I didn't say active workbook either. So it assumes the currently active workbook. Now I'm going to go ahead and run this sub, and I'm going to do it step by step with the F8 key. That's the debugger. So if I just hit F8 and then hit it again, there it's now on that line. And it should tell me I have one workbook open. And it does tell me I have exactly one workbook open. And the next one tells me that there are two sheets in the current workbook. And notice the two sheets are indeed in that current workbook. And when I come down here, um, let's see, worksheets.count. Now it's going to execute charts. So it should say no charts. So it should say zero. And indeed, there are no charts. So I should have changed that message box prompt to say charts. And I didn't do that. The next one here is what's the worksheet one name? So let's hit that and it tells me that it's sheet one. And you can notice down here, of course, on the sheet tab, it's sheet one. So that, that worked out the way we'd expect. And this next one should do the same thing, but we used a slightly different approach to do it. So I should get sheet one again. I did. And then finally, this last one does the same thing. It just says active sheet dot name. So let's take a look at that one. And I got sheet one again, so that's the third way to see the current sheet name. The key idea, though, is that we're working with objects, and these objects have properties, and you can get to these properties using the dot notation. Now I'm going to show you one other little piece of code down here that uses a little bit more, <clears throat> a few more of these things. Um, so this one, basically, we're saying active sheet dot sheet name, so we message box that. And I'm going to uncomment this line right here. And you'll notice that what I'm saying in this next line down is I'm saying I would like to take the active sheet dot name property and I want to assign total sales to it. So this is an assignment, which means it's going to store total sales into this name property, which should change the name of the active sheet. And this next one down here basically is similar, but instead of working with the sheet's name, we're working with a particular range on that sheet. So I'm saying take the active sheet's range A1 and stick a 10 in there. And notice when I say range A1 here, I don't say active sheet. That's because, again, Excel is going to assume when you don't specify which workbook or which worksheet, it's going to assume the active workbook and the active worksheet. So that's kind of hidden in there. So it'll actually sh it should show me what's in cell A1 there, and it should be the 10 that we stored just prior in that line. And finally, here's another approach. You'll notice that cells 1, 1, that's an object. That's a range object. And in this particular case, it has not a, a property, but it has a method. This is an action, a, a method that does something. You can think of this as, uh, again, a verb, if you will. It, it does some action. So in this case, it clears that cell. So that's a very easy way to clear a worksheet cell. So notice it says cells 11.clear. So let's go ahead and step through this code. I better reset my program here. And then I'll click right there and hit F8 and then hit F8. And it's going to show me the active sheet's name, sheet 1. Then it's going to change that name to total sales. And then I'm going to see if indeed it did. And sure enough, down here you'll notice it says total sales. So I'll click uh, OK on that. And then let's see what this next line does. It says take the 10 and put it into cell A1. And then it says show me that on the screen with a message box what's in cell A1. And it says there's a 10. And we can look up here on the sheet in cell A1. And sure enough, there's a 10. And finally, then we hit the clear. Let's do a F8 on that. And it cleared it. Let's look at our sheet. And indeed, it cleared that cell. And that's what the clear action does. Now, before we end here, I just want to show you one other thing. You can see the objects in Excel in a, in a very long list that's quite complicated. If you hit F2 on your keyboard, F2 takes you into the object library. And I could say, well, I'd like to see the Excel objects. And then I can see all the different Excel objects down here. So if I scroll down to the W's, for instance, you'll notice in the W's there's a workbook object. And over on the right-hand side are all the members of the workbook object. You have properties, and you have methods, and so on. So this actually is quite complex. But you can explore around these things. And, 
and so you could just kind of click on something and say active chart or active sheet. And if I hit F1 right now, I'm I'm thinking it might show me something about that.